interesting. Okay, so what about now? Let's go for our next shot indeed for the day. And Lemont Peterson, of course, you know, the two time world division champion actually lost you no know, in round 10 TKO to. Okay, so I'm told that you know Peter Khan, one of boxing's um, excellent managers, of course, is on the line. Remember, he took you know uh, Emmanuel Tiago to the US, indeed, uh, very, very shortly or so. I uh, was speaking to Peter Khan earlier. Really. Hello, Peter. Hello, Peter. Yes, how are you? Yes, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And 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 you? How is the US of A now? Everything is fantastic, and uh, I'm happy to be speaking with you. Wonderful, wonderful. You are live on the HSTV, and the show is the Ultimate Sports uh, with me, Dennis Moore. Let's quickly go ahead, Peter. So uh, now, what is really happening, of course, in your camp? And uh, we are aware that you are planning to, you know, take away Emmanuel Tego, of course, to the US of A, you know, for his, you know, I mean, um, for the exploits. How is the calendar like? What are you, I mean, what are the uh, procedures, you know, for all your trips for Emmanuel Tego? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. It's, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to share our plans. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, Emmanuel Tego was going to fight Mercito Hesta for the possibly the number one position in the WBO. And that was going to take place in June, except this past week on Thursday, Mercito Hesta lost in Los Angeles on the Golden Boy Promotions card. And uh, it was an upset. He wasn't supposed to lose, but he did lose. And so that has changed our plans a little bit. But um, Emmanuel Tego has moved up in the ratings. He is now number three in the world in the WBO. And uh, I believe he's still sitting at number nine in the IBF. So originally, we were going to fight in California against Mercito Hesta, who, who is number two in the WBO, and that would have been the number four and number two fighters fighting for the number one spot. So those plans have changed a little bit, but there also has been some other information that I think the people in Ghana would want to know, and, and that is that uh, I know Richard Comey has been saying that he has been cleared to fight by his doctor in Ghana, but he uh, is traveling to New York, I believe, next week, and he still has not been medically cleared by the doctor that originally saw him. So that's number one. Number two, uh, Vasily Lomachenko is fighting, uh, obviously, um, Anthony Krola on April 12th. And his title, the IBF title, uh, as an optional defense. And I can tell you this, Tango would take that fight in a heartbeat, but the truth of the matter is Richard Comey does not want to fight Emmanuel Tango. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting question, you know, Ghanaians we really want to ask you. Why, you know, are you avoiding Emmanuel Tego fighting uh, Richard Comey? Because, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a likable fight, you know, it is there on paper. So why are you guys trying to shield both of them? Listen, we offered to, to promote this fight in Ghana in a big stadium and make this a world lightweight title uh, fight. And the, the bottom line is that my, my personal feeling is that, number one, I think Richard Comey is a great fighter. I think he's a great person. Uh, I think he's a great champion. And everybody should be very proud of his performance when he won the title. But he does not want to fight Emmanuel Tego. The other thing is that his management does not like the people that handle Emmanuel Tego in Ghana. And he has been telling everybody this in the United States that he doesn't like those people and therefore he doesn't want Comey to fight Tego. But I think it's nonsense. I think that his manager knows that Emmanuel Tego will outbox and will beat Richard Comey. And I think everybody under, underestimates Emmanuel Tego. So that is my personal opinion. The other thing is that because of the deal that was made between, you know, Develop Entertainment yeah. and between Top Rank,
for uh, Comey to fight Issa Chania on ESPN because that because of that deal. Top rank um, has to also approve the opponent for Comey because originally Comey was supposed to fight the Seal Lomachenko on April 12th. So I would tell you this: I'm sure Top Rank will be very open to a mega fight in Ghana between Comey and Tango. But the truth of the matter is, and I'll say it now, I'll say it to their face, Richard Comey is afraid to fight Emmanuel Tango, and his management is afraid for him to fight Emmanuel Tango. Interesting, interesting. But uh, certainly we'll be, we'll be talking about this particular topic you know, in the coming weeks. But then, uh, even before I let you go, I mean, Peter, uh, when you came to Ghana, I mean, what was the general you know, uh, view about Ghana boxing? And I mean, is it on the rise? What did you see in Ghana when you came over? How did you see Ghana boxing? I see Ghana boxing the way that I've always seen Ghana boxing. From the time of Azuma Nelson, to Narakana do to all the other great fighters and, and the, the other, you know, seven world champions in, in addition to the to the two fighters I just named. Uh, and I, I said this to people in Ghana and, I, and I'll say it again, there there is no better boxing in Africa than Ghana. It is the top of the line, the most competitive fighters that can box, fighters that have that are big punchers, um, good people, good people to be around. Uh, I had an incredible time with the people from Baby Chet Promotions, from uh, from Balfour John to um, Abraham uh, and, and, and my Tessa. I mean, these guys were fantastic. You know, they, they showed me a great time while I was there. Um, they're great people. I, I don't understand how Richard Coney's team uh, couldn't find them to be easy to work with, but you know, I just think it's an excuse to not have to fight Tato personally. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, once again, I, I couldn't say any better things about Ghana and Ghana boxing. And I really hope to come back soon and to give opportunity and, and also find opportunity to work with more boxers from Ghana. Thank you very much, Peter. Your final words for Ghana and uh, yourself. You're doing a very wonderful job. So your final words for Ghana. Thank you for having me. And uh, my final word is uh, people should keep doing what they're doing. These fighters are getting better and better. And, uh, and I think there's going to be more world champions. Uh, the, the world keeps getting smaller. And I think that uh, there's going to be more people from Ghana. More fighters are going to continue to challenge for world titles. And I think we're going to see that happen fairly quickly. And if I were right now in the boxing scene in Ghana, if I were the people, I would demand to see Richard Comey and Emmanuel Tago fight for the IBF lightweight title in Ghana. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. I think that this is a subject will be, I mean, calling you to give us your, you know, experience analysis, you know, in the coming weeks. That fight, Ghanaians really, you know, love it. They really want to see the fight. Okay. Well, let's make it happen. I would love to make that happen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so um, you heard on the line that was Peter Khan. Of course, you know he is one of the you know, brilliant managers of managers, of course, in the world. He's actually you know in the fold of you know uh, Imane Kome, Imane Otego. I beg your pardon. Uh, of course, he uh, he, he be leaving for the U.S. pretty shortly. Uh, he's the world number three in WBO. So you know you heard Peter Khan exclusive right here on HSTV. It's likely Imane Otego will fight Richard Kome. You heard it first here on HS Television on the Ultimate Sports. Now.